Hey everyone. So I've gotten some questions about how to wire things in parallel and how to wire them in series. Um, and in this video, I just kind of want to walk through really carefully about what I'm doing. Uh, I know this is something that's pretty simple and there's a lot of resources for them online, but it's actually really easy to make a mistake and the consequences of a mistake can be quite large. If you, if you make a mistake in your wiring, you can permanently damage your cells, you can certify, you can hurt yourself. So it's actually something that you definitely want to pay attention to and really get down and make sure you're doing it right. Uh, also, I want to go over how to do 4S2P. Um, obviously, that can be extended to anything, 8S2P, 16S2P, for example, but how to do four cells in series while simultaneously doing two cells in parallel. Uh, there's actually two ways to do that, and I'm going to talk a lot about that. You know, I'm going to show you how to do both different ways and sort of talk about the trade-offs and why I prefer one to the other, but I do want to say, because I'll probably get flamed for it in the comments, both are fine. Neither is a big issue. They both have trade-offs. Um, you have to do what's right for you. I'm just going to talk about what I think makes the most sense. So let's get started and walk through how we're going to connect our battery cells together. Okay, so let's first talk about the absolutely most simplest way, the simplest way to connect your cells, and that's in parallel, right? So parallel means that all the positives are connected to together and all the negatives are connected to, to together. And we absolutely want to make sure that we don't accidentally connect the positive and the negatives. That's going to short the battery and send tons and tons of current uh, between the two from the negative to the positive and uh, absolutely uh, blow out these cells, right? It could really damage them. Uh, it could absolutely cause a fire, cause sparking. So you just want to be really cognizant of that. And that's another reason why I really like these um, these studs because the, you know if I put one of these on, if I put one of these on, for example, if I miss, I could accidentally connect the two and that's a big problem. But because the studs are there, it's really easy not to miss and you don't accidentally get any spinning. But anyway, if we're doing parallel, this is all we're gonna do, right? We will connect all the, in this case, these are the positives together. Connect all the negatives together. And then all we take would do now is take our washers and tighten these down. When you put these on, make sure they're good and tight. You don't want to over tighten these studs and, and damage the terminal, but you do want to make sure these are good and tight. If they're not good and tight, you're going to actually have a hard time getting current flowing. Okay. But I'm not going to show you guys uh, just doing eight of these. It would just be boring. But imagine these washers are on. Well, then for all intents and purposes, these uh, four batteries are, these four battery cells are in parallel. Why would you want to do this? Well, you'd really only want to put them in parallel if you want to equalize the voltages, right? Let's say this cell is a little bit higher than that cell, and maybe that cell is a little bit lower than this cell. We want to just make sure that we're, we're trying to top balance these or something like that. That's why you'd want to just do a configuration like this. If you're really just trying to balance these cells and get them to equalize in voltage. Um, obviously, sometimes you want to put things in parallel when you do have a final system, but you're also going to need to put them in series because no one's going to just be using these batteries at their nominal voltage around 3.2 volts, right? Um, the other thing that's really important when you're doing parallel is do not collect ba connect battery cells in series if the voltage difference between them is large. If there's a relatively large voltage difference between these, you could be in big trouble uh, because then a lot of current will flow from the high voltage battery to the low voltage battery. And that is a big problem, right? Then you're going to get a huge flow of current, probably way more than these are rated for, damaging the cell that's discharging really fast and damaging the cell that's charging really fast. So absolutely the point is that there is some voltage differential between these two. There's no really real reason to put them in parallel and to balance them if they already have the exact same voltage and we think they're great. Um, but make sure that before you put them and voltage uh, in parallel together, that they are pretty close to each other, okay? And the easiest way to do that is obviously check the voltage. And if you find that just one's too high, if one of these is at 3.4 and the other is at three volts, I wouldn't put them together. And the way to, you could do that is you could just take a simple resistor and put that on the one cell that's too high and just try to burn off some of the power that's on there. Okay, great. So now let's take a look at a series connection. Okay, so let's do a series. So notice I've left the cells in the same orientation, right? This is all, these are cells are in parallel still. And if we just did this, if we just took a bus bars and went like this, we could connect them in parallel just like we saw. How do I put them over into series now, right? We're going to make a 4S battery. That's going to be a, a 12 volt battery and it's four battery cells connected in series. Well, the easiest way to do that is to just reverse the orientation of two of the cells like this, right? So what we want is when we look at one row of the cells, we want to see, in this case, uh, uh, positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay, that's what we want to see. We want to see these alternate. Okay, what we want to do when we connect to series is we want to take one battery, connect the negative of that battery to the positive of the other battery. And then this next battery cell, we want to take the negative of this and to the positive of that. And then negative of this to the positive of that. Basically, we want to alternate between the cells how we're connecting them. So instead of connecting them all, we're going to take turns connecting them. 
So in this case, what I'll do is this cell right here is uh, positive, right? So this will be my main positive. So I'm not going to connect that to anything, okay? For now, we'll leave this unconnected to the rest of the battery, and it, it should never be connected to the rest of the battery if it's going to be our main positive. So then we take our first negative and connect it to the first to this second positive, right? The next step is to connect this negative to this positive. And the third step would be to connect this negative to this positive. Okay, and then once we're done, we would just go down with all these uh, nuts and tighten them down, okay? So this battery is, this is a 4S battery, a simple 4S battery. It has four cells and the voltage is stacking, right? We're gonna be 3.2 to 6.4 to 9.6 to 12.8, right? And notice what's going on here. We're actually just doing one long connection through the cells, right? When we're in parallel, we're just taking all the positives and negatives and putting them together. When we're in series, what we're trying to do is weave one electrical flow through the cells, right? So that's what's going on here is we want the electricity to flow through the cells so that this, from, from the difference between this positive and this negative is the, the difference between the, the potential voltages of all four of these cells. Okay, so we have four cells here. We want to stack their voltages, and we just want to weave one long connection between them. Okay, and that's what we have here. This is a simple 4SC. If I use this as my main positive and this as my main negative, well, then guess what? I've got a 12-volt battery, and I could connect an inverter to the... First, I'd connect to BMS, but I can connect an inverter to these, and then, boom, we're done. This is a 12-volt... Uh, this is a nominal 12-volt battery, Okay. It's very important when you're doing series to make sure that if you're lining them up in a row like this, that there's there's an alternation between positive, negative, positive, negative, okay? And that you're weaving just one simple zigzaggy line through the entire cells, okay? You don't wanna make a mistake again of accidentally touching or connecting any of these things. And you just wanna make sure that you're going negative, positive. Then you go over here and this is negative, positive. And then this is over here, negative, positive, okay? So each one of these, they should always be connected to an alternating color, right? White should always be connected to black. Black should always be connected to white, okay? If we're doing series, okay? So you could almost, a simple way to think about it would be like parallel, same colors, series, alternating colors, okay? Now, next I'm gonna do a slightly more complicated, I'm gonna do a 4S2P battery. Um, before I do that though, I just wanna point out that this is a 4S battery. If you wanted to, for example, make this uh, a bigger battery, all you'd have to do is add an additional cell to this, right? So if I put one more cell here, um, hold on, let me grab a cell real quick. So this is an Eve cell and you don't wanna mix cells from different manufacturers. I really wouldn't recommend that, but for demonstration purposes, this is fine. If I wanted to go ahead and make this an eight cell battery, all I'd have to do is again, add another one, make sure it's alternating, right? Connect them in series like this. And then I could add three more and I would have an 8S battery. So I could continue this, this same pattern for eight or even for 16 cells for a 48 volt battery. Okay, so it's really easy uh, to take, you know, whatever we have for four, just keep going on for either for eight or for 16 to create systems of that size. Okay, now let's do, we're gonna do a 4S2P battery. That's four, uh, four cells in series, but two, um, two cells in parallel at the same time. So it'll be, a, it'll be a 12 volt battery, but since these are 280 amp hour cells and we'll have two of them in parallel for each step of the series, we'll actually have a 560 amp hour battery uh, at 12 volts. Okay, so let's talk about the 4S2P configuration. Uh, there's, when you're doing, when you have like a 4S2P or let's say an 8S2P or you have, you have any sort of parallel par portion of this battery you're making, you always have a choice, right? You can either do one big battery and parallel your cells within the battery or you can break apart your parallel cells and just do separate batteries. So instead of doing 4S2P, you can just do two 4S batteries and then wire the entire battery in parallel. Um, so there's two different ways to do this. If you wire the entire battery in parallel, two separate batteries in parallel, you need multiple BMSs. Whereas if you wire them in one giant battery, you don't need two BMSs. But I still think that extra BMS is worth it. So I'll talk about it in a second. But before I get into that, let me show you how you do a 4S2P battery as one giant battery, okay? So remember, when we do a, a series, we're doing 4S, we need to go from positive to negative, positive to negative, right? But now what we're gonna do is that each leg of that series, of those four series battery cells, we're gonna combine two cells, right? So what I mean is, let's say we want this to be our first, um, let's say we want these to be our main cell negatives, right? 
So we want these two cells to actually be one giant cell. And the way you make one giant cell is you, you know, you just combine multiple cells by putting them in parallel. So we'll put these two in parallel and this will be our main cell negative. Okay. Now we have our main cell positive over here. Okay. Great. That's excellent. So how do we wire it to the next cell? Remember, I want these cells to be one cell. I want these cells to be one cell and I want these cells to be one cell. Each one of these is a step in the series, right? So before I go any further, why don't I just create my cells, right? Here we go. That's, this is cell one, this is cell two, this is cell three, and this is cell four, okay? And notice, I have two whites, two blacks, two whites, two blacks. So we're alternating just like before. So what do I do? How do I actually, so now I have basically the way to think about this is now I, I, these are eight cells, but I actually have two function, four cells functionally, right? Because the positives and wire, positives and negatives are wired together or bus bar together in this case, this is functionally just one large cell. This is the positive and this is the negative. Oh, sorry, this is the negative and this is the positive. Okay, so now I have four cells again and we can wire those in series just like we wired the other ones in series. So what does that mean? That means take the blacks and connect them to the whites, right? Takes the positive and connect them to the negative. So this is my main cell, um, negative, right? So let's do, if this is main cell negative, then I have to go over here, take the positive, connect it to the negative here, right? And then we'll just alternate, right? Now we're going, this is the neg this is the negative connected to that positive. So then we over go over to the positive and we connect it to the negative, right? Positive to negative, and then positive to negative, okay? Now, importantly, I don't have the bus bars to do it, but if you were going to pump a lot of power through the system, this can, you know, this is a 580 amp hour, 12 volt battery. You would want to double or triple up these bus bars, okay? Or, or, or get much thicker bus bars and make custom copper bus bars. So don't use, this is just to show you the arrangements. I wouldn't go with this system on its own uh, if you're going to use it for that kind of power. But anyway, notice we've got, now we've got a 4S battery, right? We've got one battery, series with the next battery, series with the next battery, series with the next battery. But each, each series is 2P. It's two battery cells that are battery cells that are in parallel. Okay. And you could extend this all the way, all the way to 8S2P or even 16S2P, which would be, you know, a 32 cell system, which would be huge. Right. And let's say you had a BMS and you want to connect a BMS to this. Well, notice this is my main cell negative. So I connect the BMS there. And then I would do the same thing as I normally do with the BNS, right? This goes to main cell negative as well. And then the first wire goes to first cell positive. And first cell positive in this case is this one. Second cell positive is this one. Third cell positive, this one. And fourth cell positive is that one, okay? So one BMS could monitor this whole system. But here's the issue is that BMS is not monitoring one cell, it's monitoring two cells. Conceivably, one of them could just break. And if that one of them broke and stopped producing power, that other cell, well, the BMS is just gonna see the voltage and they'll just see the voltage of that one cell. So the BMS might not know, won't know, that that other cell broke. It'll just know, hey, there's a viable cell here. It'll see the one cell and you won't necessarily know that this cell broke, okay? So anyway, this is how you can wire an 8S2P system, but let me show you how to do it a different way, how I would do it, and then we can, um, we'll talk about that and I'll tell you why I prefer that one. Okay, so let's talk about the other way to do batteries in parallel, or to do, in this case, an 8S, oh, sorry, 4S2P battery, right? So notice how I have the cells arranged right here. I have alternating cells, black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create one battery out of this, one 4S battery here, and one 4S battery here, okay? So let's do that. Uh, this will be our main cell positive and our main cell negative. So I'll do like this, okay? And that is one complete battery. And then I'll also make this a main cell positive, right? And again, we're alternating, okay? So this is one 12 volt battery, I'm sorry. This is one 12 volt battery. And this is one 12 volt battery, right? And now uh, I don't have a bus bar large enough, but if you did have a large enough bus bar, you could wire the uh, negatives together and wire the two positives together. This would be your main cell positive. This would be your main cell negative. Or if you, for example, are drawing this to inverter, you could just have a, a, the positive wire from the inverter wired to both of those and the negative wire from the inverter wired to both of these. But basically once you connect these two connections, these are two separate battery cells that are now in parallel. Sorry, two, sep ba two separate batteries that are now in parallel. So let's talk really quick about why I prefer this as opposed to the giant 4S2P battery, right? This is 
two separate batteries and you can wire them together and have the entire batteries be in par parallel as opposed to the other system where they're paralleled at the cell level um this is two batteries i think this is better uh the main drawback is you're going to need two bms's you'll be you need a bms for this battery and you'll need a bms for this for this battery that's the main drawback but i think the main benefits are you're dealing with two functional batteries here so if let's say a cell dies right if a cell dies the bms will shut down whichever battery that cell is in Right? And then you'll, you'll notice that. You'll have one functioning battery, but it'll be a healthy functioning battery. Um, and you'll notice the, just the lack of capacity or your inability to draw the, the same amount of power from it. And you'll be like, oh, one of my batteries is broken and you'll find the broken cell. But in the meantime, you'll still have a perfectly good battery. Right? Whereas if you're in an eight, a 4S, 2P, the whole eight wired together configuration, well, if one cell goes bad, you might not necessarily notice because you only have one node of the BMS accounting for two battery cells. So maybe this cell could break, but hey, if the, the, the cell that's in parallel with it isn't broken, then the voltage nominally is gonna read just fine and the BMS isn't gonna shut anything down. So you will have a lunch, it'll be much longer maybe until you notice. Maybe you'll also again get lower capacity and you won't be able to output the same amount of uh, power, um, but it might take you longer to notice because no BMS is gonna, you know, fail on you. If you have these, if you do something like this and something doesn't work, well, you're immediately going to just try to get the voltage of the battery set of the entire battery and you're not going to get anything. Uh, it won't work so well if you have a giant 8S. And if you do have a giant uh, 4S 2P battery, I'm uh, sorry, uh, not 8S, just a 4S 2P battery, and one of them does break, you're going to have to switch to this anyway, right? You'll have to take out the bad cell. You won't have enough cells anymore to do 4S 2P. So the best you can do is a 4S, have one broken cell, and then have three cells sitting on the side. So if you ever have a problem, you're going to go to this anyway. I say save yourself the trouble. Just do two separate batteries. Have two BMSs. They'll do a much better job of monitoring the cells than if they're already in parallel. And if you ever have a problem, well, you can just swap out the bad battery and leave the good battery operating. Right? So that's my philosophy. Both of them work, and people do both all the time. And if you only want to buy one BMS, hey, that's great. You do you. It's not a big deal. It's not like this is a rule. This is just a general flavor of things. If you, you know, if you want to do a 2P, so if you want to do 4S2P or 8S2P or 16S2P, I say do two separate batteries, buy two BMSs. Uh, that would be how I would do it. Okay, so I hope this video is super helpful. Please post questions and comments below if I missed anything. Also, just so I don't forget, always make sure to put your nuts on. Make sure to tighten them down pretty well. Only use one hand at a time. If you use two hands, you're much more likely to accidentally touch things and connect them. Uh, I'm not using gloves, but gloves are a great idea. And I am wearing eye protection. Always make sure to wear eye protection uh, when you're doing this. Okay, cool. Thanks, guys.